what was accomplished in, in the first part of this lab, well, you, you developed a vision-based measurement system. And basically, the idea was to begin closing the loop here, right? Um, and we had the, the basic physical system. Um, and we were observing that with, with this USB camera and using LabVIEW uh, to control that camera, acquire images, and to track the position of this needle as we controlled it using an input voltage also from the uh, output uh, analog output from a MyDAC device that we're controlling also with LabVIEW. Um, we used that system that you developed for tracking and measuring angular position of that needle to build a static gain model if you like, a simple a constant that relates the position to the input voltage. And then you should have run a few quick what we'll call open loop test with a little open loop controller and this system here describes that right we, we uh, had a simple plan of the motion we wanted for the desired position angular position what we did was we took that static gain that you measured and just invert that and use that to say hey if I want this angle then this is the voltage I need in, into my meter and then the idea is that you would get the position that you want um, so this depicts, okay, I want to have a step input. What, you sh what we find then is that we, we got a dynamic response, right? This, we treated this as a static model or, you know, one-to-one -one algebraic type model, but of course we know that it's not. It's got some dynamics in there, and that's what we're going to talk about in, in, this, in this lab. Um, so um, we you should have found that using the static gain uh, really is not enough to help you predict, uh, or and, and then we'll see to control this overshoot. You know, this is, is it, it is going to overshoot the position you want to go to. It's it's uh, it's, it's slightly under damp system, and also um, it oscillates. And you also can't predict, um, you know, how how long it takes to settle the settling time. So I'm introducing here some some dynamic characteristics, if you like, uh, specifications of the system that we want to think about and also also you might have found that there was some steady state error and that all depended on how careful you were in, uh, in, 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 def in, in identifying your static gain and that, that's always something that can be improved and maybe you'll do that in this follow-on lab. So this is um, sample results that I've gotten. You should have seen something of this sort. Right? You, you had the dashed line here representing the desired you know, stepping and then step, stepping up and stepping down. You saw each, each time you put a step input um, you you had uh, some oscillation, some overshoot, right? And then it oscillates, and then it comes to a steady state value. And, and there might be some error between where you know the desired position you wanted to be and, and where you actually were. And uh, so that error is the difference between where you want to be and and, um, and 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 where you are. And we're going to see how feed, in the feedback controller you can make use of that error. To uh, to make corrections to that, right? So, um, also by looking at this response, it should tell you something that that uh, is characteristic of of, uh, of um, many systems. You know, they have an overshoot and some oscillation, and 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 we're going to look by studying that and by looking at at the at the at the physical model, we we can make a fairly good assumption that this has uh, uh, this system can be represented using a second order. Um, uh, system, characteristic system. Um, I include this slide here just to introduce you to a few terms here and to show you what they mean on a typical plot like this. So I talked about the overshoot already, which is the, the, given that you have a desired value that you're going to, the overshoot just represents that value. And you sometimes talk about percent overshoot. Overshoot is important sometimes because we think of it as a measure of relative stability as opposed to absolute stability. Absolute stability would mean is the system stable or not? You know, it may be unstable. So uh, it doesn't come back to a, a certain position, an equilibrium position. Relative stability, stability is more, you know, how, how, how much does it overshoot a value? Eventually it does come back, but that, that can be just as important. Say you, you, know, you were trying to control something and you didn't want it to go past this because it might hit a wall or something. You may not want too much overshoot. So overshoot is an important characteristic or specification that you might place on a system. Delay time, this cap tau d, is, it might be a certain value. So this might be a 50% delay time. You, you might put a specification on a system that says, I want this, uh, I want the system to have a delay time, 50% delay time of a certain value. It means 
how, uh, how long does it take to get to 50% of the final value of up that fast? You may put a spec on this. You may say you want that to, in one second to be at that value. Likewise, rise time is a 90% spec. Settling time is uh, also can have a specific um, designation. For example, you may ask how when how long does it take to settle within two percent? Uh, they say to five percent within that value. So you know you might be within five percent after after so much time. So here here might be a settling time of five percent because you've come within five percent of the final value. Okay, and finally, the system may have a dominant time, dominant time constant that's important, and that might be a value that you're also specifying, and that might be something that's related to um, the, the the kind of the relative damping, if you like, of the system. We're going to talk and show you a little bit, talk more about damping and, and how some of those concepts that you've learned about, and hopefully in a system dynamics class, things like uh, damping ratio, and natural frequency are going to come up here, and those are things that we're going to measure in the lab, right? So if you if you if you have a certain response and that remember those tests will run open loop, we might want to think about how could we improve the response characteristics of the system. And there's two ways we do that, right? We we can modify the system through design, or we can um, try to change the control inputs, whether open or closed loop control, as we'll see today. So um, so so this um, if if you're able to go in and change the properties of the system, then that's one way. The other way is, is to is to actually implement some active control. Um, so in this follow-on lab, what we want to do is uh, spend some time modeling the system, understand on a system like this, and, and it is a lab system, but it, it's a model of, of a typical engineering problem that you might encounter. You know, by modeling it, understanding which parameters of, uh, could be changed, you know, to affect the uh, and improve the response. So by modeling, you can determine whether those are things that can be changed. Uh, and um, if you can't, then you have to do controls. We'll also study um, ways to uh, implement control, and, and then we'll experiment with control systems to give you an idea of how you go about doing that.